The first question is from SMBC Nico Securities, Mr. Kikuchi. Mr. Kikuchi, please go ahead. Thank you very much. My name is Kikuchi. Thank you for your presentation. I was able to identify very interesting topics, and I would like to very much study about these topics going forward. If I may ask a question, sir, about R&D organization. Within the group, the operating companies have different research and development organizations. Now, there's been a major sh shift in the transformation through this deal. I would imagine that that is going to be the case, possibly. I know that the specifics of what you're going to do are not de determined yet, but with regard to how, if you could share with us the uh, the policy with regard to the structure of your R&D going forward. Thank you for that question. As explained in the course of my presentation earlier, as Mr. Kiguchi, you mentioned, the role of R&D will become even more important down the road. At the same time, we're going to have a tender offer for uh, Docomo. The, we want to make sure that we're fully connected to the ION because we had a part which was not yet connected. So because wireless is going to be so critical, it's important that this component be part of the ION concept. So this is the top priority for us. So with regard to reorganization, of course, it's a matter of what type of organization we're going to create. But this wireless part, now, holding companies, R&D will talk about uh, outer space and also undersea Wi-Fi, they're very strong. But in the case of Docomo, they have strength in 5G and also strength in the 6G, which will follow. So it's important that we converge these two so that in the wireless area, we'll be able to accelerate R&D. So without a doubt, that will be the top priority for us. And one other point with regard to R&D itself. With open innovation, we need to involve various global parties. So therefore, it's important that we accelerate our global activities. And for that purpose, we need to create such a team. We're going to focus on this global oriented team even more as we go down, as we go further ahead. So, so it's important that uh, the the emphasis of, of R and D be further strengthened in the management. That is all. Thank you very much. That is all. Thank you very much. I know that there are a lot of uh, study groups and tours that you're carrying out in various uh, parts of your group, and you are very highly motivated. So I'm not sure whether or not if this is included, but I hope that with uh, entity data as well, I hope that you'll be able to do something that which can translate into concrete output. It's important that uh, you provide some economic analysis as well, so that we'll be able to have a, a dialogue with you. I would appreciate some sort of uh, explanation about how you intend to advance your organization going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your encouragement. We will certainly do our best. Thank you for those comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kikuchi. Next question is Nomura Securities, Masuno-san. Mr. Masuno, please. I have two questions. First, as you mentioned at the outset, network virtualization, CU and DU virtualization, uh, we, we, VRAN. Altiostar is already realizing this. So what is the difference in the future progress? How do you see the future progress? And you will do this in parallel with ORAN? So that's my first question. Thank you. As you correctly mentioned, Rockton and uh, Talik, uh, they are already, uh, VRAN with Altiostar is already being commercialized. But our difference with React 10 is uh, the ones that can build uh, with zero base are introducing VRAN and other global carriers, including React 10, have the existing network and migrating to vi virtualization. So that's the challenge they have to overcome. So we want to build the virtualization that can meet those needs. Altiostar, we will consult with them initially to move forward. However, as I mentioned in this material, what we are trying to pursue is NEC, the ORAN, CUDU, not just the virtualization there, but furthermore, core network, white box, and software. 
we are trying to go that far and our team r&d team will be involved and with intel working with intel and other players thank you my second question is about the semiconductor optical semiconductor in terms of ir this is esg social contribution and the uh, power consumption may be reduced by one one hundredth after this supreme intel microsoft were invited and a few dozen companies uh came up with the standard and moving towards the commercialization taking steps towards commercialization from r d this is an aggressive short-term target but the commercialization is targeted in five years time so the current progress the current status and the outlook if you could update us once again thank you so what is mentioned here 400 giga transceiver on the silicon the optical will be included and a power consumption version can be launched next year and the next one interposer in chips uh, electrical circuit in chip uh, will be uh, done optically so chip to chip connection will be uh, optical and then package uh, will be made to optical and in the end uh, we will build chips optically but in the meantime in the next two to three years optical interposer device uh, can be realized so we will go in phases and in the end the uh, uh, optical and electric will be integrated so uh, this photonic electric conversions uh, will be released as soon as possible so the global standard is already underway i own global forum nvidia is now involved intel nvidia are now part of us so open innovation standardization will be produced and co-innovation collaboration uh, will also be established so various strategies will be utilized as we move forward thank you that's all thank you thank you very much mr masunosa i'm afraid because of the time constraint this will be the final question so this will be the last question of this session last uh, next question is from Citigroup securities mr tsudo mr tsudo the floor is yours thank you very much for this opportunity i hope you can hear my voice two questions my first question relates to uh, masano-san's previous question about oran you mentioned that some will start from pure some will start from brownfield so very briefly, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these two approaches, starting from the pure approach and the brownfield approach? And that being the case, how does NTT intend to offset the any, any negatives that could be suffered by the companies who follow the brownfield approach? Well, in terms of virtualization, the the packet core, the the core, the packet core virtualization is something that uh, Docomo has already begun to launch significantly. So as a replacement, virtualization can be introduced in certain parts. So EOL timing. In other words, once the equipment needs to be replaced, then we can, will be able to replace that. So already in some parts, this is being done. Now, on the other hand, in the case of CDRDU, as I mentioned earlier, this interoperability between these components needs to be considered. They have to be insured. So this is the area where, regardless of any co combination, you have to connect to VRAN, virtual RAN. 
oh sorry it's not yet done this is one that we have a situation where everything can be connected to vram so make, making sure that we ensure connectivity of, of existing systems with vram and then pursue replacement that type of approach needs to be pursued also right now 5g is uh is expanding in the case of rural communities we can use the greenfield approach so in those approaches, we can actually deliver and introduce and launch a virtual from the beginning. So it's important that we have a good combination between the existing system, reduce the capex, and at the same time, make sure that we leverage the strength of the uh, virtual platform. If I could ask a follow-up question. When you make this coordination, do you believe that you'll be You'll be able to overcome the gap with companies that are able to uh, fo follow the green uh, field approach. Well, as you point out, what is the pricing? What can we deliver? That's something that we need to scrutinize further. Thank you. My second question. I'd like to go back to your uh, the your partnership. I know that. What is the competing technology vis-a-vis -vis ION in relation to 6G? And so that being the case, in order to, to have a de facto victory, what are some of the focus uh, emphasis that you need to uh, focus on? Of course, partnership is important, but what is the emphasis you, you're bearing in mind when you, as you try to create 6G de facto standard? You're talking about competition between 6G and ION? Is that what you asked? No, no, no. That is not the case. I think uh, in the case of optical semiconductor, this is very important to drive uh, 6G's technologies. If it's my, under, uh, it's my understanding correct, if that is the case, then is there a standout technology that can compete with six, in the context of 6G? And also, if you want to compete with such technology, what, do you, what must be done? I guess that is the gist of my question. Well, yes, but my, perhaps my explanation was not, uh, was not uh, sufficient. In the case of 6G, we are trying to expand to the wireless technology, wireless universe. In the, in the case, uh, the main target for the uh, photonic electronic convergence is to create all photonics network. We want to apply the all photonics technology. So it is not a direct competition between the two, but the wireless world also needs to incorporate digital signal sig signaling processor. They need more advanced digital sig signaling processor. So that being the case, so uh, photonics and uh, electro and uh, electronics uh, convergence could be applied in that particular area as well. Now, in terms of any competing technology, well, in how far can the non-photonic electronic convergence world advance? I guess that is going to be the dictating factor. But we can talk about collaboration, but Intel and NVIDIA might decide to further brush up their existing technology. So the cost, com so cost competition is going to be uh, the key. How, how, how advantageous can photonics and electronic convergence be? But uh, these two companies are now part of the ION partnership. That is because we believe that they want a new perspective. They want to be involved in this new LSI development. Unless they're involved in this development, then they will not be able to overcome whatever boundaries or obstacles that may exist. So that being the case, I do hope that uh, they will further be involved as partners in this initiative. Thank you very much. That is all. Thank you very much, Mr. Tsuruo. So with that, we will close the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Mr. Shibutani. Next, second theme, global strategy. A global business promotion office, Mr. Ozaki and Mr. Nakayama, senior vice president and head of finance and accounting, uh, will do a presentation. Mr. Ozaki has been involved in the global business all along and three years from 2016 was in Hong Kong, NTT Com Asia president of local subsidiary. The overseas data center launch and enhancement had been his business. It has been led the global business of NTT. And in July this year, he became global business promotion office head. Today, we will talk about the overseas company 
NTT Limited that was launched last year, the progress of the business reform and the future business strategy. Nakayama, Senior Vice President of Head of Finance and Accounting, will ask questions and Mr. Ozaki will respond to that. It will be a Q&A session. So, Mr. Ozaki and Mr. Nakayama, please.